Field Library. My name is Ken Verkamen, and uh, I'm uh, an estate planning attorney in South Brunswick. Uh, live in South Brunswick. My office is in Edison. I'm well familiar with South Plainfield because my sons wrestled all the kids there, and um, I went to high school with uh, um, Big Mr. Ashnault, and uh, you know, so I'm glad to be able to share some information with everyone tonight. You know, the big thing sometimes people will say, "Well, what?" Um, hoping that uh, you know you won't die not buying life insurance. Um, the whole idea is, uh, yeah. If, you, if you're married uh, and their children from the same relationship, it goes to the spouse, but their children from different relationships, it gets split up. And so let me go over like, uh, some of the dangers of when, what happens if you don't do any kind of uh, planning, okay? Uh, number one, uh, if there's no will or the will was declared... Uh, um, you know, invalid because it wasn't signed right. Sometimes these people use these cheap, these cheap online forms. It uh, there's there's substantially more money that has to be paid um, because um, it requires that everyone agree upon who's going to be the beneficiary of, uh, uh, you know, and who's going to be the executor. And if there's no will. It's called the administrator, and I'd say, yeah, everyone got to sign a renunciation in front of a notary. Well, if uh, if you don't have this, everyone doesn't sign the renunciation in front of a plaint and order show cause in front of a superior court judge, um, and then uh, all the beneficiaries has to have to be served with the complaint order show cause, and there has to be a hearing. So you're looking at spending, you know, three, four grand that someone doing a $400 will could have uh, avoided that. If there's no will or a cheap form used online, then there has to be what's called the surety bond. And some people can't get bonded. Again, you're paying a grand for each year. But the most, um, you know, uh, if there's no, no spouse, no close blood relatives, the state may get your property. Who would want the state of New Jersey, the people in Trenton to get their money? Nobody. Um, but most importantly, if you don't have any kind of planning, um, it often causes fights, arguments, aggravation amongst the family. So when loved ones are grieving and dealing with death, they shouldn't be overwhelmed with financial concerns and estate problems. So there's no, if, you know, why not plan ahead? Why not plan ahead? You know, uh, people buy life insurance. There's no law that says you have to have it, but if you have young kids, you'd be foolish not to. So think about who do you want to get your assets? Who don't you want to get your assets? Uh, let's see if someone has like uh, younger children, younger grandchildren, um, who would be the, uh, not the best person to raise uh, minors? Uh, we don't want we don't want eighteen year olds to get money because they're not going to invest it wisely. They're going to go to seaside and spend money. So a properly drawn basic will costs between four hundred six hundred dollars, but you're saving money in the long run because you don't have to go through the administration process. You don't have to take out surety bonds, etc. So, um, so something it, last year, you know, we all know that there was a change in in. Uh, um, the world for a period of time when everything closed down. But interestingly, my office, we were, we were very busy because people uh, um, said, hey, I got to finally get my will done, my documents. And prior to last year, we used to make everyone come in by appointment and then fill out a form in our reception area in their own handwriting and then sit down and talk with us. Well, we decided, you know what? Let's make it easier for everyone. Let's say, yeah. Uh, and so, um, you know, what we do is we uh, we we uh, learned, and most attorneys learn how to prepare documents online without people having to come into the office. I mean, you're not signing uh, virtually, but logistically, the attorney will email a will questionnaire out to everyone, and then you get to type in. Uh, your name, executor one, executor two, who's getting your stuff. It's emailed back. And uh, um, the great thing about having a newer car is that uh, 
Um, we have the hands free, especially with the iPhone. So I can talk to everyone um, at length and be able to, um, you know, talk to people, answer their questions. Because um, while while I'm when I, while I'm uh, uh, driving, I always say I got all the time in the world. So uh, I talk to people. Okay, once someone emails us back the questionnaire, and I call them again. And we and we prepare the documents and we email out the documents. Interestingly, when the governor ordered everything to be shut down except essential services, one of the places that was continued to be allowed to be open was the UPS store. The UPS store has notaries, so the UPS store was the place where people were getting their documents uh, notarized. And I'll go in the program a little bit later on how to how like you know the probate. Uh, you know, process works and, and the signing, but, um, you know, logistically, you have people didn't have to take, a, no longer have to take time off of work to go into a law office. Um, you know, you can sign your documents with witnesses on a, on a Thursday night, on a, on a Saturday, on a Sunday in front of, in front of witnesses. So there's no excuse anymore for, uh, someone not to do their documents. Um, so, you know, I, I got re retired people. I'm too busy. Come on, you're not you're not that busy. Let's let's prioritize and let's get things let's get things done. As Americans, we you know they say you worked about 80,000 80, hours in your life. Don't you want to do a couple things to protect your uh, you know your your family and make things easier for them? Okay, so what uh, what what's you know what's the easy things you got to provide to the attorney? Well. I've been telling people our original form was 10 pages long asking detailed, detailed questions regarding everyone's assets. Well, um, because New Jersey used to have a very high estate tax um, and it, it, the tax started at $675,000. Um, two years ago, New Jersey did away with the estate tax. So there's only a federal estate tax, but that's starting at Eleven million seven hundred thousand dollars, and not too many of my runner friends or people in the uh, you know Middlesex County area have eleven point seven million dollars. Maybe the people in those ritzy houses in Rumson and the Navasink, looking over the uh, uh, Navasink River and Shrewsbury River, have millions of dollars. But most people, most people don't. So you're going to be typing in your name, the spouse's name, and. Uh, now, we are, though, careful on conflicts of interest because, you know, if someone says, I, you know, I, uh, I want to get a will done for, you know, mom or dad. OK, fine. Listen, I understand they're not as good with the uh, typing in the Internet. But before I draft a document, I have to to I have to talk to them and they have to tell me what they want. They can't just say it's whatever my son wants or my son knows what, what I want. All right. Now, let's talk about executors. If someone passes away, there's a will. The executor is a person who administers the estate. New Jersey is the probate easiest state in the country. Can you believe that? You know, we, we, win, we win something good. Now, you want to have an executor one and an executor two. You never want to have joint executors because that creates twice as much work. I'd say, yeah, there's a reason why, um, you know, there's only one president of the United States at a time and then a vice president. And, you know, sometimes someone says, listen, I got two kids. I want to make them join. I goes, no, that's crazy because that means two people got to I go to the surrogate's office. Two people got to sign the contract with the realtor. Two people got to sign the contract for sale. Two people got to sign the addendum. Two people have to sign every single check. Let's try to make it less work, not more work. And then the other hand, sometimes you get uh, siblings that uh, they, like, uh, they don't agree. You know, I we handled a, a a probate contest where these two brothers they couldn't agree upon what color the sky was. Brother number one said, "The sky is blue." The other brother said, "No, it's gray. You're stupid. You've always been stupid." So, the idea is an executor one and an executor two. I tell people, listen, I'm not. You know, I know what you need more than what you need. Let's see, and I'm trying to make it uh, so don't avoid. Uh, you know, you know, take good advice from the attorney. Okay. Um, 
we don't need to know a lot about assets anymore because I said New Jersey did away with the estate tax. And um, I kind of need a ballpark. Hey, are you more or less than $11 million? Attorneys don't need to know account numbers uh, when they're doing the will. And, uh, you know, clients uh, said, you didn't list any of my assets in the will. And I said, well, the reason why we didn't list any of the assets in the will is because the will is only admitted to probate when you pass away. And unless you're able to write down uh, the day you're going to die and what you own that day, that's why we leave everything out. So, but we do ask what real estate do you have? Because some people have a, a, a second house in the Poconos or, or a second house down uh, in another state. So, if you own a will that's done in New Jersey is valid in any state. However, um, there still has to be a process where uh, in the second state, they have to go through uh, a, a procedure. Now, um, certain assets, though, don't pass directly under the will. Uh, those are assets that pass by either title or by contract. So um, the biggest example that I tell people is, is a house. Let's see, when a house is owned, husband and wife automatically goes to the survivor. The will can't change that. That's um, bank accounts. Those pass by title also. POD, j uh, joint tenancy, would write a survivorship. CDs that have uh, POD or joint tenancy goes to the survivor. The will can't change that. Other assets pass by contract. Those are IRA, 401k, life insurance, annuity, anything that has a direct beneficiary. So um, it's a good idea that unless you're 100% sure you have the, the con you have the financial plan or whatever, give you a printout of who the, who the beneficiaries are. And uh, hey, listen, you send them an email, they get back to you. If they don't get back to you, go to a different company. Um, so, okay, a will cannot change um, who the beneficiaries are. So it can't change who's getting life insurance. Get that printout, put it in your, your will folder. So then we ask, um, okay, who are your beneficiaries? And then you want to figure out if any of those specific people pass, who gets, who gets their share. So typically, um, you know, people typically go, spouse, children, if any of my children shall predecease to their children, if they don't have any children, to, um, you know, then... The, the, the grandchildren. Other people don't have children. They don't have spouses. Okay, who do you want to get your stuff? Uh, now, more and more people are not um, leaving everything outright to kids or in equal shares. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Um, at one of our programs, a um, person who became my client said, um, what one of my kids we don't hear from much? Do we have to leave everything equal to everyone? He goes no, you know what's what's the situation? He goes well, uh, he lives in on the west coast and we don't hear from him hardly at all. He goes well, did he get a card or a call uh, at Christmas? No. Did he get a card or a call on your birthday? No. Did he get a card or a call on Mother's Day? No. Well, why leave anything to someone that has no concern at all for you? Because that's going to be the, the worst person, you know, giving everyone a hard time after you die saying, where's my money, where's my money, where's my money, where's my money? Um, sometimes, though, we don't leave money outright to spouse because the spouse is going to go into a care facility. And there some, we have sometimes what we call a testamentary trust. Sometimes it's a second marriage. So rather than just leaving everything to the new spouse, for them, if you pass away, they can go to their third spouse. Um, we can put a testamentary trust within the will. Sometimes you have kids or grandkids that uh, have, have issues. Uh, I was a speaker for the American Bar Association last week on the program, estate planning where there's a dysfunctional child. I wanted to call a difficult child, they said dysfunctional, but think of a kid that, you know, they're an alcohol, a drug addict, they're a spendthrift, they're bankrupt, they're just, they're lazy. Well, you don't want to give the problem kid $300,000 for them to go out and buy a, a $200,000 car and spend the rest of it. So and sometimes, again, we do what's called a testamentary trust within, within the will. Now, a testamentary trust within the will 
it's much different than these things called living trusts. And living trusts, um, that's where the trust now is going to own the property. Um, my mother-in-law, Anita, used to come to me every other year and say, I want to come in and get a trust done. And I would say, were you watching Susie Orman on TV? And she goes, yes. I go, well, Susie Orman is, is exactly right if you live in New York, California, Florida, where the probate process is very complicated. However, if you live in New Jersey, because probate's so easy, why does someone want to spend three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 setting up these sophisticated trusts and then having the trusts own the property? Um, because, and I'll, I'll touch upon, a little bit more upon the trust later on. Yeah. Um, so some people also have what's called specific bequests. What a specific bequest is, is where you're giving uh, a person or entity uh, items or, you know, something, uh, something of value. So um, it's kind of, kind of, sometimes the uh, ladies say, listen, I want uh, my wedding ring, my engagement ring to go to... Uh, my daughter, my granddaughter, because they know if their son is the executor, he's going to bring the cash for gold and say, what do you give me for this junk? But remember, it's it's so important to have it in the will, because if it's not in the will, uh, then it like, um, uh, doesn't matter who you say it to. You could um, it, Mother's Day is in a few weeks. Um, you could say on Mother's Day, and it's recorded on the iPhone, I want my jewelry to go to my granddaughter, Shannon. Well, not only does the executor not have to follow what you said, the executor can't follow what you said unless it's in the four corners of the will. And uh, interesting, you know, sometimes the clients will sometimes say, well, I know everyone will do the right thing or my daughter. I goes, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll do the right thing too while you're alive. No one's going to stand up in front. He goes, hey, listen, I'm going to screw my brother or do this. Just like when people have these assets that um, are in joint names with the kids, like big assets, like, you know, an account with $300,000. He goes, oh, I'm sure my daughter will do the right thing. I goes, well, I'm sure while you're alive, she'll do the right thing also, but a lot of times they're influenced by, 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 uh, by family. So um, other examples of specific bequests, sometimes someone will say, okay, I leave $10,000 to... Uh, you know, St. Francis, my church. I leave $5,000 to uh, St. Thomas Aquinas High School uh, for, I get to buy, you know, uniforms for the track team because their uniforms, like, uh, needed to be replaced and they're not getting taxpayer money. Uh, so, uh, no, we're not saying every piece of junk in your house, uh, you, you're listing and who's getting what, but it's more the things of value. Uh, now, some people have what I call the reverse of a specific bequest, and that is I leave nothing to whatever person. You don't leave them a dollar. You don't say a reason why. Just I leave nothing to that to that person. If there's minor kids, we have a clause that says they don't get the money outright when they're 18. They get some when they're 22, some when they're 25. They're balanced when they're 30. But um, uh, they can expend... Uh, you know, as much money as is needed for health, education, payment for college. So the idea is set these things up within a will. Otherwise, a 19-year-old gets money. And what What does a 19-year-old do with money? They they buy, they buy get their friends to buy beer and they go down to Seaside and they, they spend it. They won't, they won't invest it wisely. And they're also influenced by other people. Uh, when there's minor children, there should be a clause like uh, for trustees and guardians. So the, think of the trustee as the person who holds the money, the guardian holds the kids. So when the people have minor children, you know, they sometimes say, oh, I can't decide. It's so difficult. He goes, no, it's very easy. Let me help you out. Who would not be a good choice? I'd say you, you've kind of narrowed down. There's only a few people on the planet that you would trust with your kids. Um, but if you don't have the will, a stranger, a bald white guy at the courthouse decides who gets custody. That's who's ever the judge at the time. Um, if you're writing anything down, you want to have what's called a self-proving will. Um, and, you know, because under the old law, um, person signs to two witnesses, but then the executive had to locate one of the two witnesses and pay them to 
go to the surrogate's office. And I remember my grandmother passed, and one of the witnesses said, yeah, I can be a witness. My fee's $500. And we said, $500? We're not paying you $500. The, the witness goes, okay, get the other person. Well, well, she's dead. So, you know, you know. otherwise we would have had to file a complaint on a show cause. So the legislature came up with something called a self-proving will. Person signs, two witnesses sign, the attorney and notary signs, then the witness signs again, two witnesses sign again with certain language that we that's required for self-proving, then the attorney and notary signs again. Therefore, when the will is admitted to probate, you don't have to locate the witnesses and have them sign papers. That's important because sometimes you can't locate witnesses. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, I know these cheap things that people find online are not self-proving wills. And you think you're saving money, but you're really cheap. And now it's kind of like not changing your oil. Uh, and then later on, you need a new engine. Also, the will should have a clause that says no bond requ is required because otherwise the executive has to take out a bond. So just by having that, you're saving, you know, the bonding fee. And I mentioned the bonding fee could be, uh, the different companies could charge a grand a year. Uh, different kinds of, uh, and also uh, you should advise your attorney if any of the kids are getting SSI or SDD, because if they, if they inherit a lump of money, then they could lose their government entitlements. So that's why sometimes some people like I wear they they have kids that are special needs, they'll spend a couple grand to set up a special needs trust, so that um, they don't lose their uh, what their different entitlements are. Okay, you filled out the will questionnaire. Uh, it's emailed to the attorney. The attorney prepares the documents. They uh, nowadays like uh, you know to um, save the environment, we um, we email to everyone. And we say, listen, you know, read it. If it contains what you want, we're giving instructions for you to sign in front of a notary at, uh, at the UPS store or another place. Uh, the will requires two witnesses. A spouse can be a witness. Uh, another person needs to be the witness. A spouse uh, should not be the witness on the power of attorney. Um, only the original will can be admitted to probate. Um, so make sure it's put in a place where your executor's um, you know, can locate, uh, get to it. So don't put it in a safe deposit box because the same thing. You want a document that can be reached on the weekend or nighttime. Uh, get get these things done. Don't put it off. There was a guy that, uh, you know, old timer, he goes, you tell him, you know, what to do. And he goes, oh, I want to read up more on this. So he goes, I go, Carl, you don't need to read anything. This is what I went to law school. I lecture on this. I wrote a book for the American Bar on this. So, uh, he goes, well, I want to I want to read more up on it. And, um, okay, you know, two years later, the family calls me. He goes, uh, we saw some communications that you had with Dad. He passed away. Do you have his will? I goes, no. He wanted to read more about this. I goes, you know, people, you don't need to read anything. When I was having knee surgery, I read nothing about knee surgery. I don't want to know how the doctor does it. I call Rutgers track coach. Hey, who's the best guy you got for knees? He goes, oh, this guy at University of Orthopedics. Okay, good. He asked the doctor, you've done this procedure before, doctor? He goes, Kenny, I could do this in my sleep almost. Okay, good. I don't need to read about stuff. I just need to read. I need to read about how to rehabilitate afterwards. Just like I tell people, if you want to read about stuff, read about what to do after, after you've signed the will. Okay. So, again, you don't need to read anything. Clauses in the wills, uh, you know, debts and taxes paid, distribution of spouse, sometimes trust for a spouse, distribution of children, sometimes uh, trust for children, even if they're uh, higher up. Who's the executor? Who's the trustee? Who's the guardian? Um, you get your documents and, uh, and you're done. Trust. Let's say um, there's two types of trust, revocable trust, uh, also called living trust, and um, irrevocable trust. Revocable trusts are uh, popular in Florida, California, New York, where probate's very complicated. Um, but I tell people, when someone says they want to have a trust, I ask them, okay, why do you want to spend three to six grand? Probate in New Jersey is easy and inexpensive. You're paying three grand a piece for the trust and you're retitling the assets. 
A revocable trust does not protect assets from nursing home taxes or from creditors. Some people, you know, some of the trust salesmen say, well, a trust is, is private and no one knows your business. They goes, well, unless someone's leaving money to Nazis, what do you get? Most people are leaving the money to their, their kids or their family. Uh, it also re uh, it requires that the property be retitled and you know, retitling a property is more than just, it's not like a car title where you sign it back and give it to someone. Uh, a new deed, uh, you know, when you're retitling uh, real estate, it's a new deed, affidavit of title, seller's residency certification, uh, affidavit of consideration, um, you know, a check not to exceed $150, um, the county clerk cover sheet, and uh, then it gotta be refiled. There is a trust that's called an irrevocable trust. That's common where people want to uh, protect their assets from Medicaid. Um, that means that you're not going to own the assets anymore. You can't control the trust. And it has to be in effect for five years, 60 months. Um, wills. A will that's done now in New Jersey is valid in any other state and doesn't have to be updated unless you want changes. However, we do recommend a new power of attorney be signed every 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 five years um so uh, oh but before we get into powers of attorney um i always like to say uh, when we used to do the live shows i i used to have more interaction with with everyone and uh what i say now is that uh, uh we typically charge a console fee of two hundred dollars but if someone contacts us within uh 30 days of the program um, same thing, we email the questionnaire, they get it back to us, and I, I, I discuss with them you know, what I would recommend. Then it's up to someone like whether or not they want to have the documents done or not. You know, but I've never had anyone in 35 years after doing the documents say, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Everyone's like, I am so glad I finally got this done. After you get your do um, after you have your documents signed, now I mentioned I mentioned only the original will can be admitted to probate, but many people will provide copies to family. The power of attorney, though, uh, it's a good idea to scan it and uh, email it to like uh, you know agent one, agent two, your financial planner, uh, life insurance person, bank, etc. Now let's also now now we're going to talk about the document that is called the power of attorney. A will takes care of your assets if you pass away. Let's see what a power of attorney does is you're giving the power during your lifetime to someone to make sure that your bills are paid and uh, that you know your uh, your interests are looked after. A power of attorney is effective either right away or only upon disability. Um, so when it's effective right away, that's called a durable power of attorney. You know, it's effective right away, stays effective if someone becomes, you know, disabled. Um, the other type of power of attorney is effective only upon disability. Uh, and that's called the springing power of attorney because it only springs into effect if someone becomes disabled. Now, I had a, uh, a client, a good guy, and he goes, Kenny, listen, he goes, you're using legal terms on me, um, springing and durable. He goes, I'm a carpenter. Please explain to me in carpenter language. And I goes, uh, okay, let's see. Durable power of attorney means effective right away. What that means is that your son, who has the power of attorney, your son can steal all of your assets right away. If it's a, if it's the other kind, um, spring is springing, not durable. It only it uh, he needs a note and a certification from the doctor before he steals all your money. Knowing that, you trust your son. The man goes, I trust my son with my life. I goes, well, then make it effective right away. You know, your son's not going to steal from you. Um, you know he's a beneficiary, and you know it's it's easy nowadays to do a uh, to do a paper trail. So um, we've we've like uh, revised the powers of attorney over time. So typically, uh, there's a clause that permits like uh, um, them to use it to transfer real estate, sign contracts, um, 
bank accounts, gift giving. Now, let me talk about bank accounts. Um, a lot of banks used to give people a hard time with the power of attorney. They would say, oh, it wasn't done on our form. We, we, wanted the, uh, we need it done on the first fidelity form. So there was a change in the law that said, if it makes reference to New Jersey statute, then the bank has to honor it. However, it has to make reference to the statute PL 1991 C46 colon 2B-11. And listen, I know these cheap things that people find online don't have reference to New Jersey statute. Um, so, um, if, and now if someone doesn't have a power of attorney, and someone becomes incapacitated, you have to go through an expensive and complicated uh, process called a guardianship. So, you know, that's where you're getting affidavits from doctors saying your loved one is incapacitated. You got to go to court and, you know, have the judge and everyone in the courtroom hear your dirty laundry. So you want to avoid a guardianship. You have, uh, uh, you have the, the living will done and, uh, you know, that way you're avoiding, um, you know, problems down the road. Now, get the, pa get the power of attorney done now. Um, we get calls all the time from people, oh, I need to get a power of attorney like, uh, over mom, dad, Uncle Joe. Okay, we need to talk to them. Well, they can't. I goes, well, then we can't do a power of attorney. You can't get power of attorney over someone else. They have to give it to you. So the better thing to do is have it, you, know, you have it done now, and that way again it's in the drawer and you've 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 taken care of this. Um, doing your estate planning sometimes is like uh, uh, doing that spring cleaning. You know, cleaning out the garage that you haven't cleaned since since last October. You don't look forward to it, but you, all of a sudden you, you or, you're organize some shelves, you throw out a bunch of junk, and then there's room to move around. And I goes, hey, I'm glad I finally did that. Same thing with doing your, your, your will, your power of attorney, and your, and your living will. Now also, uh, this year we also added a clause in the power of attorney designated someone to be a caregiver. Uh, just like in the in the will we designated someone to be the funeral agent typically the same person who's the executor but because there's been different changes in the law you know it's good to uh, 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 do this now I mentioned a will a will is good forever a power of attorney we recommend that you resign every um, you know, uh, five or so years because sometimes the banks give you a hard time after you sign it yeah, uh, it, uh, it's a good idea to scan it and send it to your financial planner so it's in their records so that it, it, it has to be acted upon. It's not a surprise. The, ne the next document we're going to talk about is the Living Will Advanced Directive. So when we, talk, when we think about the Living Will, you know, people can think about the uh, Terry Schiavo case, the Karen Ann Quinlan case where people... Uh, Terry Schiavo, the situation was like uh, they went to court because the person did not have a a living will, and there's a battle over over what to do. Now, the living will is not a document really for you because you're the one that's, you know, in the coma and irreversible condition. It's really so your family doesn't have to go through the the, the suffering of of what to do. You want it already in black and white so that they don't have to, you know be asked that question. I remember one time a doctor asked me the ultimate question. Okay, should today be the day? And I remember saying, geez, doctor, I feel bad. I feel, now you know what the right decision is for someone who is 92 years old that isn't going to open up their eyes again, but you hate to be the one to say, okay, yeah, okay, let's end their life right now. I couldn't even do it for my, my first dog. So the whole idea is to avoid that kind of uh, thing. You want, you want the family to be able to say, Doctor, listen, here's a copy of the, the living will. Let, uh, let's uh, respect uh, you know, the person's wishes. This is what they wanted. So what do most people want? Well, we took language from the Medical Society um, you know, living will. So that um, basically fluids and nutrition, yes or no. 85% of the people say, listen, if there's no hope for them, no fluids and nutrition at all. Let's see. Uh, people years ago um, used to say, I can't sign it because my, my religion doesn't permit me to do that. Well, that's all fairy tales because every major religion 
believes in, uh, you know, has approved living wills. So they don't believe in mercy killing, but living wills, yes. The next section deals with directive as to medical treatment artificial machines. And nowadays I find 99% of the people say, listen, if there's no hope for me, I'm in a coma. Pull the plug. I don't want to be you know, kept alive and have my family suffering seeing me like, uh, you know, in, in a bed. So the living will document is really something for your family, uh, not not for you. At the uh, And you're picking someone who the doctors can talk to and go over go over your wishes. Also, they're in a way the captain of the ship. The important thing on having the living will uh, is so that there's one person who's the number one. So all of a sudden, if one of the kids who wasn't in the picture comes barging into the uh, hospital room and goes, okay, I'm in charge now and I'm going to start saying what we're going to do. No, you've already picked who you want. Uh, there's a number one, number two, not, not a joint. The last page, you talk about organ donation. Organ donation, yes. Organ donation, no. I recommend everyone sign the yes on organ donation. Uh, it's it's important. You never know whose life you can save. I went to an interesting program put on by the NJ Sharing Network, and there were, and I asked a question. I goes, "What's the maximum age to be an organ donor?" And um, you know, they said there is no maximum age. I go, well, what's good on an 85-year-old guy? They said skin and cornea. I goes, well, I never thought about that. Gee, if I was in a fire, I'd rather have the old guy's skin than uh, the stuff that was burned off me. Probate. Um, probate of the will in New Jersey is easy. I went through, you bring the, um, we help people. Uh, now, the, uh, it's still because of COVID, the surrogate's office aren't open to the public, so we help the people by, um, filling out the uh, surrogate information sheet. We send a, uh, a, copy, a copy first to the surrogate of the will death certificate um, and the surrogate and the information sheet. Once they get that, they send the papers to the attorney. The client comes into our office and they sign. Then we send to the surrogate's office the original will, original death certificate, the form and check for about $150. The papers come back. The person is the... Um, executor of the estate. Uh, they have, they, um, they obtain a tax ID number, set up an estate account, liquidate the assets, put them in the estate account, sell the house, pay the bills. Once we know what's left, then there's an informal accounting sent to all the beneficiaries indicating what, you know, what's there and what someone's going to get. The attorney prepares a release on a funding bond. Everyone signs that and, uh, and we're, and we're done. You know, who, you know, now, let's say one of the beneficiaries won't sign the release from funding bond. That creates a problem. That means that no one can get their money. Well, like that's kind of, you know, but that's, that's it. You know, that becomes a problem because unless everyone signs the release from funding bond, then we have to go through an expensive and complicated uh, court uh, proceeding requesting a, a filing complaint, order show cause, and for a formal accounting, in which are very high fees. So, um, if we don't get everyone to sign the release of a funding bond, we put that in a letter to everyone. You know, that, you know, Brother X has not signed this and it's going to delay everyone getting their money for another year. But if Brother X does sign, then we don't have to go through the complaint, order, show cause, hearings, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, so if he does sign in the next couple of weeks, so we can avoid all this money. And by the way, Brother X's uh, address is here. His phone number is here. This is the email. So the family gets on that person to sign. So, as I said, probate in New Jersey is not that, is not that complicated. Uh, you, know, you know, your attorney helps you along the way. It's not gonna cost ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. You know, it's, you know, kind of having these documents done is an investment. Uh, so, uh, my name is Kenneth Verkam, and I'm an attorney in Edison, New Jersey at 2053 Woodbridge Avenue. My law office uh, phone number is 732-572-0500. I now start saying after 10, a, after like, uh, 10 a.m. so that no one's calling our office at 7 o'clock. And uh, um, 